So just took a tour of the old Port Royal School and talk about living history. Uh, lady gave me a tour. I believe she said her name was Miss Coleman. She's almost 90 years old and she was a teacher and student at uh, one of these one room schoolhouses in Caroline. And she's got it set up pretty much as it was when it was active. Yeah, so as you saw the sign said it was active 1924 until 1959. And to give you some background, before the school was built, uh, the black children were educated at a local church. The church burned down, that's why they had to build this place. And then 1959, once segregation ended, uh, uh, black children went to the school in Bowling Green. So, and it, it, interesting note about this place that there was one teacher throughout it, its uh, entire 35 year existence. A uh, lady uh, named Miss Hortense Brown, Hortense Brown Rich, and she taught all grade levels, uh, all subjects. And uh, yeah, so I'll just go ahead and play out the tour. It's uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes. And uh, definitely interesting hearing her talk about how the day ran and, and how everything worked back then. So anyway, so yeah, I'll go ahead and play it out and uh, see you on the next one. I'm a retired fourth grade teacher. I'm a native of Caroline County. My people have lived here and been land owners uh, since slavery. Uh, in 1941, when the federal government purchased uh, AP Hill, that over 70,000 acres of land here. My family on this side, I have to say my mother's family as well as my father's family, suddenly became landless. All right? And, uh, this building was placed here in 1923, a time of segregation, as you would recall in Virginia, when we had two um, school systems, two school districts, one for black children or colored children, as they were called then, and then one for the whites. This was the building that was put up in 1923. Uh, the school that is two or three streets removed from where we are is now used as the town council, the town hall building, as it were. In 1924, this school was opened and a young college graduate, whose picture you will see soon, Hortense Brown, was hired as the teacher of the school. The school would serve uh, grades kindergarten right on up to the seventh grade. And at that point in time, many of the scholars, when they succeeded in reaching and uh, completing the seventh grade, went right into the job market, particularly some of the young people. You had one teacher with all of these grades, one teacher teaching all of the subjects. And the subjects were primarily reading, writing, and arithmetic, uh, history and geography, that kind of thing. The school day began, of course, with devotions. School was about God and country, trying to get boys and girls to become the best citizens, the best men and women that they could. We have a table out here because this was a time when you use wash basins or anything or anything like that in this building. So we have wash basins and a uh, canister of water out here and soap and towels for the boys and girls to wash their hands with. The, the one teacher who served here, and you see her picture there on the wall, Miss Hawkins Brown. She just graduated from Virginia State College. And, in 1923 when this building was completed, 1924 she came here as the, um, the teacher of, of this building. And she would begin her day with the ringing of the school bell, which is what I do with my scholars, and she called the scholars, and I called them scholars too. Um, when they were out playing in the yard, and they came out and they called them, and rang the bell, they knew that that was a signal to quickly line up there on the porch single file and walk quietly into the building and take their desk. They sat at the same desk throughout the school year. Um, these buildings are always referenced as one room schoolhouses, but they are really one classroom schoolhouses. Invariably, they had two or three rooms. This one has three rooms. Uh, the cloak room, as it was called, and 
Then the activity room. Remember these scholars were in school from 9 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon. So on a rainy day or a real cold day, they would be in school all day long during the lunch and recess period. They just pushed their desk together and they had the other space to um, parade around in and the activity room where they would pass some games in. The school, as you can see, was heated by a wood-burning stove with a box and the scholars, the male scholars, had to not only do the school work, but also some additional work, bringing in wood and filling the box and taking out ashes and, and that kind of thing. Uh, until 1950, God provided the light for this classroom. That's why you have a whole wall of windows, as it were. 1950, the school was electrified uh, with the very bare lights that you see up there. Uh, in addition to God's light through the windows, of course, we had a couple of oil burning lamps, one always on the teacher's desk and one at the back of the room on the geography table. The music in these buildings and music was only uh, singing. And you see, you know, very, very, these classrooms had an upright uh, piano. And that is an old piano that had belonged to Black Baptist Minister uh, with some old music books there as well. The flag on the wall was given to one of the founders of the school in 1923. He had served in the First World War honorably, and his family then presented that flag to me when I opened the school in 1993. When I did, I received, uh, as you see on the desk here, a picture of the governor, a letter from the governor. I was invited to Richmond, uh, and you also see a copy of the pre star where they recognize this, hmm. this old building. Uh, but at any rate, when the scholars came here, they would have devotion, devotion period, saying of the 23rd Psalm, the Lord's Prayer, the Pledge of Allegiance to the country's flag, and the singing of my country, tis of thee. After that would be followed by physical inspection. Physical cleanliness is next to godliness, my grandmother always indi indicated. And so I had to see their fingernails, their hands, their teeth, and uh, see that their hair was combed. And I keep a comb in my desk because back then, one comb would have served to comb however many heads of hair they needed to comb with just that comb. So uh, devotional period, physical inspection, each scholar had to have a clean leg. Um, that you don't see a box of tissues on my desk, you don't see a box of, but at any rate, their school work would have been in here once they'd had the, uh, the devotional period followed by the physical uh, inspection period. Uh, they'd turn to their school work, arithmetic and reading, particularly uh, in the mornings. I use only old books, uh, old readers and geography books, that kind of thing. Every scholar has a penmanship lesson because um, that was taught earlier on, and I really copied this, or based this program when I developed what I call a living history program for the school, uh, based it on what happened uh, 65 years ago in, in a classroom like this. And I knew why, because I went to uh, two of these one-room schoolhouses, my mother before me uh, did as well, so it was easy work for me to do that. So we follow up pretty much using the old materials uh, from that time here. Scholars here, and I always address them as scholars, cannot just speak out. I explained to them that in the early days of the school building, there would have been 35, 40, 45 young people in here. Mrs. Rich, the, the only teacher who taught in here was besides myself, whose picture, as I've indicated, that's the way she looked when she came here. And you see a picture on the old piano there uh, of Mrs. Rich three weeks before she died. That picture was taken of Mrs. Rich. She's seated behind my desk there. She could come in and spend the entire day from 10 in the morning until 2 in the afternoon watching me work with the children. This is a place of great honor, responsibility, and love uh, for Mrs. Rich. And that, as I've indicated, is the last picture taken of her. Um, the, the I'm proud, proud because when the Caroline County did uh, its, its remembrance like it here, they, and there's a lot of history in Caroline County, but if you look, you'll see the old Fort Walk School was deemed important enough to be placed on their blanket. And just last week, I was told Caroline County now has established a taking a school bus that they go around, send the children and teachers around visiting homes and, and that kind of thing. And what's on the, on the side of their school bus? 
our painting of the old Fort Morris School. So it pleases me mightily as having founded this um, this project. And these are pictures, by the way, and I keep the material to protect them. But it pleases me that the old school uh, is so popular. This is a picture taken uh, many, many years ago of the school. There are four of them that I've been able to, to find over the years. This is the second one, and here you have Mrs. Rich as uh, a, young, a very young teacher holding a four and a half year old child who was allowed to come to school as long as they didn't cry or interrupt the classes. Even at four and a half, they were allowed to come. Here's Mrs. Rich as a middle-aged uh, teacher taking a class of young boys and girls, scholars as she called them, who had done particularly well in school. And so she was providing a treat for them, taking them on a field trip two blocks away to the Rappahannock River <laughs> where she was going to toast marshmallows. And boys and girls love coming and spending a day here. Wash basins, one of the old water buckets, and the um, kind of shit I remember when my uncle made this kind, of, this kind of dipper for the school that I attended here uh, in Caroline County many, many years ago. Uh, it would have been one of the earlier dippers there. Mm -hmm. Wash basins and those kinds of things that I would I own the oldest uh, existing building in the in the town the seven my home is seven, built in 1740 and uh at one time that almost two acres that i own right here on the river uh with the house that stands on that had four buildings on it but there's only the one house left now but this this uh meat house was at one time on my property uh, okay. and later it was moved to another property and then finally placed here it's just quite a bit of money to have restored